Thank you. Well, hello. Oops. How are we? Thank you for inviting me to speak at this brilliant conference. You all having a good time? Awesome. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the fact that whilst we're sitting here drinking coffee and enjoying ourselves, there is a bit of a cyber war going on outside. We have to say cyber, of course, um, so that we can all be suitably frightened and tense. Um, but I am, of course, talking about hacking. Um, people are worried about it. You know, we see that business leaders feel that their cyber security risk is increasing. We even have studies like this one that says there's an attack every 39 seconds. So if we all sit still long enough, there'll be one any second. And the problem with it is, is that people think that hackers look like this. Now, I have to say, I do have a hoodie. Uh, I don't often wear it for work. And I bet you're thinking, how is she a hacker? She seems to have some sort of social skills, and I'm not behind a computer, right? Um, and actually, we're talking more about criminals when we talk about hacks, not hackers. If you want to get the hacking fraternity annoyed, call us criminals or get us mixed up with it, right? But I am a hacker, but I'm not a a typical hacker that you would see in the press or in popular culture. I'm actually a hacker that's responsible uh, for the type of attack that is the most common, and that is social engineering. Social engineers are kind of, if you like, the zombies of the hacking community, right? Because we're after brains and what goes on within the brains, because actually it's a quicker way in most of the time. So, I have spent, I guess, a lifetime getting past people, getting into businesses, getting into emails, through phone calls and persuasion techniques, getting people to tell me the way in to the information that they would prefer to keep private. The problem is, is that in security, there's this term that we use, the term that says that none of you can do much about it. You see, because what we say is that people are the weakest link that in any security chain, it's the people that are going to let the attackers pass the gates. And it's perpetuated by endless headlines from the security press and beyond. It's the employees that let us down. It's the employees that let the attackers in. Because the technology is doing a good job, so what we need to do is not get to the locks. What we need to do is get to the people. And honestly, as technology gets better, it is a quick way in. If I can get you to tell me passwords, or get you to hold a door open, or build up a picture of information all about the business that you work in and about your life, then that's a quick way in. And when I say that this is a problem, you really need to believe me, because most people, when they think of a cyber attack, don't think about the human element enough. But widely corroborate it widely corroborated, is that by far the most attacks originate from human error or manipulation. And who's doing it anyway? Well, it is the guy in the hoodie. I mean, if we could put all our efforts into catching this one guy in the hoodie, we'd all be fine. But non-technical uh, hackers, typical hackers, also use social engineering. Someone's got to click on it. Someone's got to open the attachment. Someone's got to let us in. And then there's this one. Inside a threat, one of the biggest growth areas for my business is spotting the bad apple in the barrel. That one person in the organization who's discontented, who through mischief or malice or just through mistake puts the company at risk. You all know there's that one person in work that you think about, that you are suspicious of. Every one of you's got a name or a face. You think, I always thought that guy or that woman was weird. Just to say that if you aren't thinking of someone, you are the person that everyone else is thinking of, right? And the thing is this, of course they're after the money, of course they are, this pays well. I mean, look, the average cost of a data breach in 2020 is estimated to be in excess of $150 million. And that's due to the GDPR rules, it's due to legislation, but the human cost of it is huge. So, it doesn't matter whether you're a big company, 
big company like this, maybe one of these offices, maybe 3,000 people in that organization in one of those buildings, 3,000 potential ways in. 3,000 people who know something about that organization can help us build a picture so that when we attack, when we make that approach, it lands, it hits home. And what about if they've got good security resources? There's a team in place to protect it. Nah, maybe. But you know what we can do? We can go to the smaller businesses they deal with. Everyone's a node on the network. Everyone's a way back to the money and the data, right? And the thing is, what's really dangerous is that most people don't think that they're important enough, don't think that they're rich enough to be a target. But you are, because you're a link in that chain. And that makes you important, and that makes you worth hacking. And whether we're going to turn up at your business and get into the actual company, go through the gates, right? And get to the, to the laptops and to the desks and bypass all that perimeter security, or whether it's going to be a phone call. All of them are effective ways, but you know that the most effective way isn't those. The most effective way that you and every one of us can be social engineered is through email. And the, th the really worrying thing the really worrying thing is that people think they can spot a phishing email. <laughs> Not so much. Here's the thing. Do you know those phishing emails that ask you, if you just give me your bank details, I'll give you $14 million. That's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about the obvious emails. We're not talking about the emails that clearly address you wrongly or have got bad grammar or go straight for the jugular in terms of passwords. We're not talking about those. I'm talking about something called a, a spearfish, where it's not just sending it to a group of people, where it looks at one person and we look exactly at that person's profile because then we know that they're so likely to click. You see, what social engineering really does is mess with your brain. Remember the zombie thing, the brains. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look at your brains. We're gonna look at the things that all humans have in common, like our automatic behavior, the things that we can't help but do just because we're human, all of us. Because, you know, we get distracted very easily. And what happens is our brains don't really kick in properly. The fastest part of our system is actually our animal brains, not the human side. We have this part of us that responds in a visceral, in an ancient way, to things like emotional stimulus. So what happens with a scammer or a con artist is we want to raise your emotions in your brain. Because when people's emotions are raised up high, their decision-making capacity plummets. And in that moment, you're going to be offered a way out. In that moment of emotional fog, we don't make good decisions. And if you're offered something that will clear those decisions, we all tend to click on it. Let's talk about a few emotions. One of my favorites, fear. So, let's imagine that we receive an email. An email that says something along the lines of, you have committed a traffic offence and you need to pay. And not only that, we've already notified you and you need to pay it really quickly. You know, you might think, no, I haven't. I would spot that. But get the right person at the right time. Profile that person properly. And they click. And once they click, we're in. And if that doesn't work, this one does. You know, Greed's a strong word, more like the promise of reward is what I guess I'm saying. How about a call something like this? Oh, hi, hi, my name's Simone. I'm calling you from Super Duper Executive Headhunters and Recruitment Online. Hi, how are you? You know, a colleague of yours gave me your name and your number because we've got a smashing job available for you right now. And it pays like a million pounds. And you only work on Tuesday mornings with supermodels and Ferraris. Are you interested? They tend to say yes, funnily enough. And then when they say yes, you say, well, look, let me have a quick telephone interview. Tech team. So, what sort of systems are you using at the moment? Do you ever handle breaches? When was the last one? How big was the team? Is it 24-7? Who's in charge? Do you know what? You've done really well at this interview. Actually, I've got you down to the final two, but I'm not going to rush you. 
Now, I'm going to let you think about it. And I'm going to call you back in 48 hours after I speak to the client. Is that OK? And you know, even if that person isn't interested in leaving their current job, they're curious. What's the package like? Who recommended me? Where's the reference? And so we give it an hour or two, because you, you never give a target time to think. And then I call them back, and I say, do you know something? I put you down as one of my top two. And I told the client, and they're super, super excited to speak to you. So what I need you to do now is sign this NDA as soon as you can, and we can tell you everything. Shall I send it through? And you say yes. And it doesn't even have to be that big a deal. Maybe we offer people a free coffee, right? Click on the, on the link and you get the discount code. And because the prize, because the reward is so small, people think the risk is small, and so they click on it. Or maybe it's offering you a discount in your favorite store, especially this time of year, right? Christmas is Christmas for scammers and con artists. But you don't give people time to think. We keep them in that emotional fog, and we keep them going as long as we can. And sometimes that doesn't work. And there'll be people in this audience right now thinking, that doesn't work on me. Ha, that's the best type of mark. The best type of mark is the person who thinks that they cannot be marked, I promise you. Because your defenses are down in arrogance and victory. Or try anger. How about this one? An entire company. We didn't send it to the IT desk, but we sent it to everyone else. And we said this. In five minutes, the internet will go down. If you do not click on the backup internet, all of your work for the last morning will be lost. Thank you. And they were fuming. Everyone was angry, and they started calling each other. But of the 367 emails we sent out, 360 clicked. The other seven were either out of the office or outside, arguing about how terrible their internet was. It doesn't matter on the size of the business. It doesn't really matter on the person. This stat from Cybin said 62% of businesses reported social engineering phishing attacks in 2018. But there are two types of business, those who've been socially engineered and know it, and those who've been socially engineered and don't know it yet. I even think that's a really low number. And back in the day, it was a hard thing for me to do. Back in the day, I used to have to do actual surveillance. You used to have to park cars outside offices and follow you into Joe's bar to listen to the conversation so that we could approach you properly. But now, I don't have to do that now. Now it's real quick. Now, it's more about what people don't put online than what they do put online. So if you want to build a picture of everything that goes on in a company in order to hack that company, I just need to spend a couple of hours on social media. And then the pictures fall into place, and we know the weaknesses, and we can get in. Because you put everything online. Everyone puts everything online, from where and how you exercise, to the people you socialize with and the places that you go, to your business, to the insides of your business offices, so we can see your lanyards and fire alarm times and stuff like that, but even right down to the people and the things that you care about, to that which you wish to protect, to the fears that keep you up at night, to the things that motivate you, the things that make you want to take action and speak out in this crazy world even down to the things that we're ashamed of and we'd rather hide. See, we need our shields up, ladies and gentlemen, but they're usually down. <sighs> so I didn't want to be scary or leave on like a downer. So what I'm going to say is that actually from a security point of view, there's some things that you can do easily, cheaply, or even free. The first thing is, is admit that security is not someone else's problem. Just because you don't have security in your title doesn't mean that you're not a target. We have to look after ourselves individually because we're targeted as individuals. And how do we even do it? Well, there's lots of ways. First of all, accept that you, of course, are at risk. Secondly, I want you to look at the security awareness training and programs that you have in your business. And what I need you to do is this. If it is not landing with you, if it is like listening to one of these announcements, right? 
and you don't feel that it's personal or connected or we don't understand why you're being told to do things like have strong passwords and update all your applications. You need to complain and say we want something that resonates more, something that's more entertaining, more engaging, and that involves you, the staff, as opposed to a security team spreading that message. I also want you to engage the human brain rather than the mammal brain and think really, really carefully before we put something online. Before you put information online about you and your families and your lives, I want you to think, what would a malicious actor do with this information? And I want you to think, if you get an email or an approach that makes you emotional in some way, think, what are they trying to do? What does emotion do to me? I'm angry, I'm frightened, I'm scared, I'm happy. Think, stop. If they mention money, particularly if they mention money as well, or going outside the rules in some way, we stop. And if they rush you, if you're asked to do something quickly, particularly if it's got to do with money, then we step back, we go and tell someone else, and that emotional fog is going to go down, and our reason's going to come back in and save us. And lastly, what we need to do is be kind. Be kind to people who get caught out by this stuff. It's an epidemic. All of us are targets. Probably at some point we'll all be victims. And that means organisations need to stop blaming people when they get caught. And we need to be sympathetic and kind to other people because we're all in this fight together. Are we the weakest link? We are a weak link sometimes, you know. We are human. We are at the place where the fallen angels meet the rising apes. And you know what? It might be our downfall. It really might be. But it's also our one shot at redemption. And so I'm going to leave you with this quote. The one thing that makes it possible to be an optimist is if you have a contingency plan for when all hell breaks loose. Let's meet them at the gate, people. Thank you.